All right. Thank you so much, Chris. I will see you after to see if we have any questions. And good afternoon, everybody. We are going to be talking about Microsoft Publisher tips and tricks this afternoon. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera so we can dive right into what we have. And as Chris mentioned before, this is a um, piece of software that doesn't get as much love in the Microsoft suite as like Excel, Word, some of the other high, you know, things in the Microsoft Suite. So we're going to talk, uh, talk a little bit about that. As we like to do with our programs, we have a resource shout out for you. So LinkedIn Learning, one of our favorites, especially when it comes to things um, involving technology or software. Um, remember that this is a resource that is free with your library card. It used to be known as lynda.com. So if you're um, familiar with Linda, it's the same thing. It's now called LinkedIn Learning. Two classes for you. We have Publisher Essential Training. It's about a two and a half hour course. You can break it up into pieces so you don't have to sit there for two and a half hours. Um, this one in particular is Office 365, Microsoft 365. That's the newest one. And I also shouted out one on Pages. So Pages is a publishing um, piece of software that's available for Mac users. You might be wondering why I'm shouting out another one. We're talking about publishers. We're going to get to that in just a moment. So a few things about publisher. So as I mentioned before, Microsoft Publisher is a publishing application. So what does that mean? It is something where you can develop things for mass printing, like flyers, cards, labels, invitations, newsletters. It's basically just a way for you to make some nice, clean um, things to be disseminated for whatever reason. Um, it is really helpful if you are familiar with the Microsoft Suite. So if you are somebody who uses Word or Excel or PowerPoint, um, a lot of that functionality is the same. So the toolbar is going to look very uh, look the same, very similar. It's very, very similar to other um, pieces of software in the Microsoft Suite. Um, there are templates for you to use. We're also going to take a minute, a look here in just a second at some of the functionality of Publisher. So hang tight on that. Um, what is the best way to use it? It is best if you have an idea in mind and a little design experience. As I mentioned before, Publisher does have templates, but it's really nice if you have an idea in mind and you just want to hurry up and put pen to paper, if you will. So for example, we're going to take a look at a project that I did last week um, for our library's activity to go packets where I just needed to throw together a sheet, a worksheet really quick. Um, and Publisher was perfect for that. And as I mentioned before, it is optimal for quick and small scale projects. So um, for the project that I just mentioned earlier, where I just needed to throw together a worksheet really quick, something quick and dirty to put together uh, to be printed. Um, if you just need to do address labels, but you don't want it to be like plain boring address labels, you can add a tiny little graphic to your address labels and print them out that way. So it's really good for quick and small scale projects. Um, this is something very important to keep in mind. Make sure everyone you plan to share your project with, if you want them to be able to edit it or look at it in some cases, make sure that they have access to Publisher. So you may be thinking to yourself, why are you mentioning that? If they have access to the Microsoft Suite, shouldn't they have access to Publisher? Not necessarily. Publisher is not available on Mac. So um, it's only available on PC devices. Um, I know for sure that there is I, there's not a publisher app for like iPad. There might be one for Android. I'd have to take a quick look at that. But there's definitely not one for Mac, and it's not available for MacBooks or iMac. So publisher is only available on PC devices. That means if you share a publisher file with somebody who does not have the publisher um, app or the publisher piece of software, then they won't be able to view it. Um, so you're wondering if you have a Mac, then what can I use to do quick publishing? Um, a great alternative to that is Pages. As I mentioned before, LinkedIn Learning has a Pages essential training as well. Um, pages is a um, mix between Word and Publisher for Mac users. So Pages is only available for Mac users. So if you need something where you can put something together very quickly, Pages is good for you. Um, if you are also looking for something, a piece of publishing software that is compatible with 
um, PCs and Mac, you may want to look into Adobe InDesign. Of course, that's a very high power piece of software. It's also one that you have to pay for. You do have to pay for the Microsoft Suite as well, but most people get it for free through their uh, job or through school. So it's really easy to get a free download if you are enrolled in school or if you uh, work or or in a job that has it, you can just download it to your devices. And Canva, Canva is free. They also have paid off um, paid options as well. So if you want to put together something very quickly, Canva is very good at that. Um, so now that we've covered a couple of things about Publisher, let's go ahead and take a look at Publisher. So as I mentioned before, I had to put together a quick and dirty um, thing for our activities to go packets for the library. Um, they're little packets that we put together for um, families to print out and do different activities at home. So I needed to make one for fry bread. So this is something that was very quick that I threw together. It took me probably about half an hour. So let's look at some of the elements of Publisher. So up here, I have my photo. So I wanted to include a photo so people could see what fry bread looked like. And you can see as I move my elements around. So all the different parts are elements. So I have my photo. I have my title. That's one, a different element. I have a little blurb and I have the ingredients and the direction. So the sheet here is an eight and a half, just a standard eight and a half by 11. Um, you'll notice on the top here, I also have a ruler so I can see, you know, where things are being placed. And you may have noticed, let me zoom in a little bit here. You may have noticed that when I started moving the photo around, some rulers or like little guides started showing up. So one of the things that I like about Publisher is that it'll align everything, auto align things for you or not auto align, but it'll make it easier for you to find that middle point, really easy for me to line things up. So also one thing I like about it is if you had a bunch of different elements, um, you could put them to the side. So for example, if I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to put the blurb about uh, fry bread, I could have it over to the side here as part of my um, document and just drag it in where I wanted it to go. Let's see what else is cool about, oops, I don't want that to be there. What else is cool about Publisher? So one of the things that I really like is the um, guides. So up in your toolbar under page design, you have access to guides. So let's say that you wanted a three column newsletter. Um, let's say you wanted a two column newsletter with a tie, you know, with um, space on top for a title or any other difference, um, um, however you wanted it to be. You can see here, I just put that in there. So you have your different guides. You can take out your no ruler guides. You'll also notice around the edge here, that's my margin. So here I set my margins for moderate. So this is 0.5 inches around the entire document. Um, going back to guides, you can also add your own horizontal and vertical guides if you know exactly where you want them to go. So for example, let me uh, pull out a horizontal, which you can also do here. I can pull one down. This is an eight and a half by 11. So five and a half is halfway. So I can have a halfway point right here. So you can pull down guides wherever you need them. It's another cool option I like. Um, also, under File and Save As, so if you do want to share, if I did want to share this document with somebody else, so for example, my um, boss likes to look at stuff on his Mac sometimes, so I can go to Save As, and in the drop-down menu, I can change it to a PDF, I can change it to a Word document, I can change it to a JPEG, I can change it to a PNG, so you are able to convert your file into other file types, so it is, you do have the option to do that. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? Let's take a look at the templates. So I'm going to go to File, let me do that again, I'm going to go to File, New, and a bunch of templates are going to pop up. So if you want a blank page, um, the one I just showed you now was a blank page that I started with. So it could be um, portrait or landscape. Or let's say you wanted to make a birthday party invitation. I'm going to click on this birthday party invitation, click create. 
And here you got a template for a birthday party invitation. So you have the graphics already done for you. You have all of that stuff done for you. And you have all of the different, let me zoom in. They always make it really small. So you have all the elements for a birthday invitation, like a little postcard here. So you can edit, obviously this is just a fake address that they put in. So you could change it to all the things for your birthday party, just something really quick and dirty you can throw together. So if you didn't wanna pay for professionally printed invitations, but you just wanted to let somebody know, hey, I'm having a party, publisher here has it. All you gotta do is fill in the right information and mail them off. Another thing that I found very useful, let's do another one, our um, address labels. So um, as you saw, um, publisher has a lot of templates. I should have put in address labels. So you can see down here, all of the different address label templates that you have. So um, I'm just gonna click on this one. Let's click create. And you can see here, here are your templates. Let's say you were doing holiday ones. Um, I picked a holiday one. So you have your template here and you can print out a ton of address labels and have them ready to go. So again, Publisher is wonderful for those quick and dirty um, quick projects that you need to do where you already know what you need. I need to make address labels. I need to make an invitation. I need to do this. I just need to do something really quick. It is perfect for that. So I am going to jump over to our closing slide here. And while we're waiting for questions to come in, um, I know Chris is on standby waiting for your questions. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover our, our um, closing slide where we're waiting for those questions. So as always, if you need to contact us, we got our contact link there available for you. You can see us at, um, you can, and reach out to us by phone, email, text, any way you can think of, you can reach out to us. There's our contact information. If you want to see what we have going on at the library, there's our programs and events calendar. So if you want to see what other programs that you can attend, definitely check out our events calendar. Um, we just started Hispanic Heritage Month today. So a bunch of really awesome programs um, available with that. Um, if you want to learn more about Tech Topics, we have our own Tech Topics page as well. And the next topic will be iOS basic. So we'll be going over just a little bit of the history of iOS and the, you know how it came about and um, a couple of basics with that. We will be taking a couple of weeks off for tech topics. So we will be back on October 6th. So Chris, I'm gonna go ahead and come back on camera and let me know if we have any questions. Well, it appears we do not have any questions. You did such a great job presenting. Everyone is informed and ready to use Microsoft Publisher. Awesome. That was a good presentation. Again, it's a great it's a great tool that people don't know about. And you mentioned some of the other options in case your devices or uh, you know projects don't match what Publisher offers. So yeah, thank you there's to a me. bunch of really awesome um, publishing software out there. And as I mentioned before, if you wanna dive in into a little bit more of the functionality of Microsoft Publisher, um, check out the LinkedIn Learning Course. It's pretty thorough, it's two and a half hours. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about that, that is available for you too. All right. Well, thanks everyone for attending and thank you Tanisha for another great, great tech topics. We'll see you on October 6th for the next one. All right, bye, Good everybody. Good night, everybody.